The Honda Civic is once again king of the extremely competitive compact car segment, but you know what's better than the Honda Civic sedan? This right here. My name is Omar and this is the 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback. So personally, I have always been a fan of hatchbacks. They just make more sense to me. Not only do they usually look better than their sedan counterparts, but you cannot deny the utility that you get from the extra cargo space. And if you're a fan of hatchbacks over sedans, consider subscribing to my channel. I drop new videos every single week, so you don't want to miss out. Now, I know the redesigned 11th generation Civic has been pretty controversial when it comes to the looks, but I actually like it quite a bit. So the trim I'm driving here is the top of the line Sport Touring on the Civic sedan. The top of the line model is called Just Touring because I guess hatchbacks are just sportier. But yeah, the Civic Hatchback Sport Touring gets a slightly different grille with a honeycomb style pattern. It's got these really cool 17 inch alloy wheels. You can get it in a boost blue color like the current Civic Type R, which you cannot get on the sedan. And apparently I wasn't cool enough to test it in the boost blue color. Other than that, it's got a really slick rear end design. And to be honest, you can't really tell that it's a hatch. It still kind of looks like that it has that four door coupe thing going on. And with that being said, I don't know why everybody who's considering buying the Civic wouldn't just buy the hatchback. It kind of looks more like a liftback than a hatchback. Now, the other reason they call this a sport touring is because the hatchback is the only Civic that currently comes with a six speed manual. You cannot get a manual on the sedan. And the six speed manual is the one that I'm testing here and it's pretty easy to drive. It's a very smooth shifting gearbox. I feel like it has short throws and I really have no complaints with it. I honestly had no major complaints with the CVT that I tested on the Civic sedan, but having a six speed manual just makes the Civic this much more fun to drive. This being a compact car, there is nothing that sporty about it. If you want to get sporty, go for the Civic Si or wait for the next Civic Type R. Now, all that said, this thing is insanely comfortable to drive. The new Civic is so well put together. There aren't really any theatrics and I'm not expecting there to be. This is just a really comfortable compact sedan. And to be honest, this feels as good as a compact luxury sedan or a luxury hatchback in this case. The interior is so well done with very high quality materials, solid touch points, that you almost feel like you're sitting in an Audi or BMW. Yeah, I said it, don't get mad about that. Really sit in a new Civic and hear what I'm saying. So do I recommend buying the Civic hatchback over the competition like the Toyota Corolla hatchback or the Mazda 3 hatchback? Well, first, let me give you a quick tour where I will cover some cool features, break down the pricing on the trims, give you a closer look at the exterior and the interior, and then I'll give you my opinion on how the new Civic hatchback stacks up against the rivals. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, let's start off this tour by taking a look at all of the cool and interesting things that you should know about the new Civic hatchback. Now, since this is a hatchback, let's get the hatchback talk out of the way first. There is only one reason that I would get the Civic hatchback over the Civic sedan. Well, two, if you count the exterior design, but the main reason is the cargo space. While the Civic sedan will give you a sizable trunk at 14.8 cubic feet, the Civic hatchback starts you off with a massive 24.5 cubic feet. And then you also have 60-40 split fold down rear seats to open that up to much more. You have plenty of room for a bunch of large items here, so I'm not sure why anybody would go for the sedan over the hatchback. All right, so I've already done a deep dive review of the new Civic when I tested the sedan, so if you wanna check that out, I'll link it in the description below. But as always, I'm not gonna leave you hanging, so let's do a quick rapid fire session covering some important ones. First up, each generation of the Civic has an Easter egg hidden in the center armrest. Pop it open, pull out the coin tray and flip it over, and you'll see a really cool paper craft graphic of the first generation Civic. The new Civic definitely has one of the best digital instrument displays in this segment with a lot of information and a very clean design. Cool thing here is that the tiny Civic in the gauge cluster right there will imitate your rear lights in real time, whether you're indicating, hitting the brakes, or turning on your hazards. Also, if you have the digital instrument display and you have lane keep assist turned on, you'll have an active visual lane guidance that will show you the lanes bending as the road bends ahead. That is really cool. And also, if you have adaptive cruise control turned on, you'll see graphics of all the vehicles around you. To the point, if there is a truck next to you, you'll see a truck. Now, I know other vehicles have this too, but it's really nice to see this on an affordable compact car. Let's get into the pricing a little bit. The pricing for the Civic hatchback starts at $22,900 for the base LX model and goes all the way up to $29,400 for the fully loaded high-end trim sport touring. 
So yes, that makes the Civic hatchback just a little bit more expensive than the Civic sedan. However, just like the Civic sedan, you get a bunch of standard options starting with the base LX model. You have a seven inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And you also get a long list of driver assist tech as a part of Honda Sensing that includes adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition, collision mitigation, road departure mitigation, that itself is pretty impressive right off the bat. Now, if you want to get a little fancy with some bells and whistles, you want to start building at the EXL trim. And here you will get leather trim seats and the front seats are actually heated. And that's nice for a cold day like today. You also get dual zone climate control so the driver and the passenger can enjoy their own temperature. The EXL will also add on a one touch power moonroof and it'll add on blind spot monitoring as well. Now, if you totally want to ball out and get it fully loaded, you'll have to start off with the Civic Hatchback Sport Touring like my test model here. And that adds on this larger nine inch touchscreen display with navigation. You also get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You've got a really solid 12 speaker Bose sound system and you get a massive 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster display along with a wireless charger, which I was hoping would be standard on other trim levels as well, but it's not. Let's talk horsepower and torque. You have the same engine options as the sedan. My test model here is powered by a 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo engine that pumps out a total of 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. And this one here is mated to a six speed manual transmission. The base LX and sport models get a two liter four cylinder engine making 158 horsepower. And keep in mind, if you want the six speed manual, you can only get it on the Civic hatchback. The Civic sedan is only available with a CVT. Now, depending on how good of a shifter you are, you can do zero to 60 in about seven and a half seconds with the top speed still coming in at 130 miles an hour. Now with the six speed manual and the 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo engine, the Civic hatchback will give you a fuel economy of 28 city and 37 highway. You have a 12.4 gallon tank capacity. I'm averaging after a few days of driving a total of 30.1 miles a gallon, not bad. Let's take a look at the exterior design of the new Civic hatchback. And I personally find it to be way more stylish than the Civic sedan. I remember when the Civic sedan first came out, everyone was talking about how the styling was a little bland. However, as I pointed out in my review of the Civic sedan, I feel like Honda does that purposely to make sure that the design of the Civic stays timeless. But yeah, I definitely like the rear end of the Civic hatchback more than the sedan, but I have to say the Civic hatchback looks less hatchbacky than the last generation. Either way, let me know which Civic you would go for, the sedan or the hatchback. Leave a comment below. Now let's hop inside the new Civic hatchback. And obviously it's the same as the Civic sedan that I tested earlier this year. I think Honda definitely nailed it when it came to redoing the interior of the new Civic. The last few gens were a bit disappointing in terms of quality and styling, but the new 11th generation is pretty outstanding. You have a strong use of high quality materials throughout this cabin. Everything feels really, really nice to the touch. And design wise, it's a great balance of simplicity and elegance. Everything is ergonomically placed within the reach of the driver as well as the passenger. Prior to the new Civic coming out to me, the Mazda 3 had the best interior, but now my choice goes to the Civic. Now, when it comes to rear legroom, you don't really gain or lose anything. You still have a total of 37.4 inches of legroom in the back seat. And I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. As you can see, it's a good amount of room and it is pretty comfortable back here. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the Civic stacks up against the competition, let me point out a few random things that I'll have to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers, and then you have two in the back for the rear passengers, and you also have some bottle holders on the side of the doors, like that. And here are what the keys look like to the Civic hatchback. Not much difference in the sedan. Probably should get a manicure, but whatever. But yeah. They're really nice and small. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Nice little welcome sound. Pretty solid. There's that welcome sound. Honda, enjoy your ride. Charging game wise, you don't get any USB-C ports, so that's kind of annoying, but you do get two USB-A ports, one for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Projection. You obviously also have wireless and one just for charging, and that's where your wireless charger is, which is only available on the Sport Touring, and I wish it was available across the lineup. Rear passengers also get to enjoy some charging game with two USB-A ports. Winter is coming, and I'm definitely not looking forward to filming in the winter, but I still will to bring you that fresh content. Either way, let's hear the indicator and horn sound here on the 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback indicator first. 
like it. Now for the horn sound. Yep, pretty Civic. And now that I've given you a tour of the new Civic hatchback, let me give you my opinion on how this compares to the competition. Let's get to it. Now, let me be completely honest with you guys. For a solid six to seven years, I've been a huge fan of the Mazda 3, and I still am. The Mazda 3 is one of the best compact cars out there, sedan or hatchback. They look great, they drive great, and you can't deny that Mazda has some of the best interiors out there. Well, the new Civic is now right up there with the Mazda 3, and to be honest, it's just a bit better. The Civic got pretty lazy in the last few generations when it came to interior quality and design, but with the 11th generation Civic, Honda has knocked it out of the park, which is why the Civic has now taken back its crown as king of the compact car segment. And I cannot wait to drive the Civic Si. And honestly, I would really own a Civic Type R if it felt like this on the inside. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, peace. By the way, I know I mentioned this earlier, but it's amazing that you get adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist as standard on every trim level of the Civic as a part of Honda Sensing. That's pretty amazing.